All right, so here we are, July the 6th, two days after Independence Day here in the United States. And it's a really fascinating time to be present on this planet. I have been just receiving more and more confirmation, not that I needed confirmation because I've been very clear about my purpose and, and what I'm here to do. But it does, it does feel wonderful when I get more clarity about not only what I'm here to do, which is to help awaken humanity to the magnificence within. That was the mission that was given to me in 2007, and it's never, it's never changed. And when I was told, Lina, your mission is to awaken humanity to the magnificence within, I was like, what the heck is that? I mean, what do you mean awaken? What, is, what does awaken humanity mean? I didn't understand that fully. And I didn't understand what, what, what magnificence that humanity has. Humanity can't be magnificent. Look at what people do that is so um, horrible and mean and selfish and greedy. So for a very long time, I knew that I, all I had to do was trust the mission that had been given to me and just do it. I didn't need to know how. I didn't need to know why. I did not need to have specifics. I just needed to do what I was being guided to do. And I was told to become a, uh, an awareness coach. I didn't know what that was. I was told to open up a center. I'd never run a center. I didn't know what, what that entailed. I was told that I was going to teach a workshop called the power of awareness, and I was going to teach only one process, and it was called shift and lift, and it was given to me, boom, 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 the information came in very quickly. I wrote it down, and I began to teach. I began to share these very simple uh, principles, and it was all about helping people see the soul's journey from conception to enlightenment, and it became very clear that my mission was to simplify the spiritual path. And I, I have heard for, gosh, 16, 17 years, people tell me, you simplify this. You help me connect the dots. You make it fun. You make it easy to understand. You make it relatable. You make it applicable. So that's basically what I've always gotten back as feedback. So I knew that I see the big picture of the journey. I, I see it all. I mean, it's it's just clear as as mud, as they say in, in the South, clear to me what everybody has to go through. But obviously for each person, it it gets revealed as they go. It's it's a mystery. And I I am very certain that this doesn't need to be a mystery. And it stops being a mystery once we understand our purpose. And when I was asking today, well, what are we going to study today? Because last week we studied uh, lesson 100, which said my part is essential in God's plan for salvation. And today when I open and I open up the book randomly, I open where I'm told to open and I landed on lesson 101. So the lesson right after the one that we just studied yesterday and the title to this one is God wills for me perfect happiness. And it wasn't until I began to understand what that meant that I was able to really get clear that my purpose in awakening humanity to the magnificence within is only possible because I have awakened myself to the magnificence within. Now, let me just be very clear that the journey to awaken, it, it takes a while. I used to think, okay, one and done. I figured this out. I had an encounter with source. I got the workshop. I, I'm listening. I'm following. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. One and done. When is the learning going to end? And, and I realized, well, no, it doesn't end because we are not learning we are expanding our awareness of the truth of who we are. And for us to have a journey as a human, we have to condense our awareness. We shrink it and we shrink it or we block it, however you want to put it, it doesn't matter. All knowing is available to each and every one of us, but we create obstacles. We create barriers to being able to access that knowingness because 
well, what's the point of being a human if you know you're not? <laughs> and it's like, you need to have the experience of being a human to be a human. The awakening process is the beginning to open up the portals that allows the truth to come in. And when I say come in, they don't come in from out there. They are emerging, emerging from within because there is no out there. There is only the oneness of consciousness that is what is, and we are contained within it. So it's not an out there. It's, it's, and this is where uh, the further into this journey we go, the more we understand paradoxes. So it's within and without as above, so below, but there is no above and there is no below. And we have to get our minds comfortable with, with paradoxes, with how can there not be above and below, but we're told, well, as above, so below, it's because oneness cannot, it doesn't have sides. It can't be divided. It can't be anything but what it is. So we are discovering that we have the ability to tap into what appears to be coming from the outside, but the only way you get it is by going inside. So that's how we, we work with the paradox and teachers like me, I'm not teaching you anything you do not know. I am just helping you remember the truth that has always been true. When we have an aha, we are not ever learning anything new. We are remembering what is true. That's it. So the more ahas that we have, the more portals we're opening up. We are allowing ourselves to receive because really everything is like a toroidal field. I don't know if you've seen photos of that, images of that, but it's basically a field that energy goes up and it comes right back in and it goes up and it comes right back in because there is no outside. It all emanates from the inside, but there's no just the inside. It all goes out and comes back in. So like an infinity symbol, we are constantly looping in and out of the, the truth. And we take however much we can take at any given moment then we apply it into our lives. And as we apply it into our lives, our lives have to change because as we bring it in, we are sending out signals of what it is that we prefer to experience. To become a human is to block ourselves from the awareness that we create our own reality. So we are literally blocking our awareness that we are the creator. God, the mother, father, God, and, and each and every one of us is one. Lots of teachers have been telling us that. And why do we not believe it? Why do we not operate from a, yeah, that is the truth of who I am because of all the blocks, all the beliefs that limit our awareness. And by the way, that's the only thing that blocks our awareness. We, we don't have like metal plates or, or cartilages that get in the way of, of knowledge. We don't have uh, a maze that has been built inside of us or muscle that keeps us from accessing truth. It's simply beliefs, thoughts that we have are the most potent things in the world because thoughts activate either flow with what is or they block flow. If they block flow, they are leading that being into an experience of limitation, hence becoming humans. So we block ourselves and limit ourselves and, and think that I'm just this body not remembering that I created this body to have an experience of what it's like to be in a body. And all of that is all well and good. See, the creative source creates only for fun. That's it, for fun. God, source, spirit, whatever we want to call it, is the ultimate playful child. It cannot get any more playful than that. And it's, it's not only is it the ultimate playful child, it is innocent, absolutely innocent, it does not create anything malevolent to can't because it is pure innocence. And it is so intelligent. It, it's all the intelligence that is possible, all contained within this playful consciousness that just wants to have fun. And it desires to experience itself in all the infinite ways that it can show up. So when we have the human experience, we know from the other side, before we incarnate, we know 
well, this is just a game. We are going to go in there and we are going to take on a physical vessel, kind of like Halloween. This is going to be our costume. And or you can use the analogy of a of a play. Oh, this is going to be the role that we're going to play. And the world is the stage. The world is the Halloween party. But what happens to us is that through all of those those uh, blocks that we place in, in our awareness of the truth of who we are. Well, we think that we are in the Halloween party. We think that we are actually in inside of um, a, a movie. You know, we think I am, you know, I am this actor. I am Lina, that, then that's what, what I am. That's all I can be. So because we forget what we are, there is only one way to remember. And that is all by agreement. It's by design because to enter into the, the process of thinking we are separate because that's just our ego mind that says, well, I'm separate from God. I'm different. I'm separate. To enter into that experience fully, there is only one way out. And that is to understand polarity, to understand duality, to understand everything in twos. We need to see this side and balance it out with that side. That is the way that 3D humans have been operating from a non-physical perspective. We enter into the game of separation. That's what the ego is all about. Ego is nothing more than the thoughts that we have to think to believe that we're not what we are. That's why when we transcend our ego, all that means is we stop thinking things that are not true. That's it. Because ego is not an organ. It is not a membrane. It is not a cell. It is not, it's not a um, cartilage. It, it's nothing. You, you can't find um, ego inside of yourself. There isn't a thing called an ego. There is thoughts that conglomerate together and create a sense of self. And a very simple way to test this is you take a child and let's say you want to do an experiment with a child. Um, you can place it, place an American born child in a Chinese family and it's going to learn Chinese. It's going to believe that its name is Sun Ying and it's going to believe that it loves Chinese food, and it's going to uh, follow Chinese doctrines because its family is going to be Chinese, and that's going to be what is put into it. So that child before it is Sun Li, is, there's no ego. There, there's no possible ego until it begins to believe what it is told. Take that same child, and let's, let's send that American-born baby, and we're going to send it to Peru, and we're going to have the Peruvian people raise that child and its name is going to be Maria Gonzalez. And Maria Gonzalez is going to love Peruvian food. She is most likely going to believe Catholicism because that's what her family is going to teach her. She's going to speak Spanish and Sun Li is going to speak Chinese. But if you think about it, what is the only difference between these two beings? It's the environment that programs them because we come in deliberately to be programmed by an environment, grow up in that environment. And when we are ready to wake up, we are literally understanding that we're not the, we're, we're not our environment, we're the product of it. So we have to go through the thoughts like a child who is adopted in China wants to go, um, uh, find its American parents. We, I'm sure if we don't personally know somebody who was adopted and wants to find their family, we've seen it in a movie. We are aware of the process of a child feeling, oh my goodness, I, I don't belong here. There's more to me. Well, it's no different than our, our awakening process. We all have to come to the realization that something's off. And what is off is that inside of us, there is a vibration. It's, it's like the, the tuning fork that's reminding us um, that we don't belong here. And it is, it's vibrating. It's tuned into source. So we've got to go through lots of, of experiences to help us learn through duality. Is it real or not? Is it true or false? Is it good or bad? Is it right or wrong? 
And as we sort out our own personal experiences, our own personal situations, is it true that I'm from Peru or not? Is it true that I am Latin or not? And we begin to go through those very basic questioning of our human experience, then we begin to realize that there is, there is more to begin to question. So not only are we questioning very simple things, you know, I keep eating this Peruvian food, but I feel like eating American food. I, I just want a hamburger or I just want mac and cheese and chicken fingers. And you, you gravitate towards those things and you begin to question. Well, humanity is at a place where we need to question the big picture. It's, it's no more about questioning the simple stuff. Oh, I don't like this. I, why do I feel so drawn to move to Singapore? Why do I feel so drawn to go um, to, to the Amazon and, and, or join a, a convent or go to an ashram in India? Why am I feeling that pull? Well, it's because inside there's a frequency that is tuning to this other frequency that is calling us. It's like we're being attuned to move to the places where we need to go to, to, to facilitate. They facilitate our remembering. They don't give us our truth. Remember, our truth is already inside of us. They are activating the memory that gives us the opportunity to have the aha. Oh, that's it. And we, we begin to put pieces of the puzzle together internally because we have those who have done that before explaining us how to do that externally. As within, so without. We are all one. We're all helping each other. There is just no way, especially at this stage of the awakening process, that we are not going to find somebody that is going to that is going to support our journey. Though what we need to learn, what we need to be clear about is where are we on that journey? Which is why I have the soul's journey on my website. It's a free course. You can download it. If you haven't seen it in a while, go check it out again. And once you, you access it, you, you have access to it forever and doesn't cost anything, but it is a process, which I'm getting ready to upload a video because I've done a, a more recent video to, to talk about what's going on today in relation to that soul's journey, which is what I have been clear, uh, more clear is now the, the follow-up to my purpose. So my purpose, yes, to help awaken humanity to the magnificence within, but more specifically to help those who are really serious about transcending the ego. When we transcend our ego, we free our soul. There is absolutely no way to awaken the soul and transcend and fully be fully, fully connected to the truth of who we are until we understand the ego and transcend it. What transcendence means is if you look at the word and you play with the word, transcend means we end the trance that we are in. We are in a trance. Whenever we have a reaction, whenever we have a judgment, when we don't like what somebody does to us, when we are offended by what somebody says, when we are upset about the way um, you know we look or somebody looks or um, if we get upset because we don't get the promotion or we get angry that somebody breaks up with us, if we get upset that the stock market crashes and we lose our money, we haven't transcended the ego. What is happening is the ego is ascending into our conscious awareness because anything that has to do with the external world having any power over us is nothing more than that irritation that serves as an invitation to discover our ego's motivation. We cannot transcend the ego until it rises into our conscious awareness. See, the ego is very tricky. This idea that I'm, I'm you know, Sun Lee or I am Maria Gonzalez or Lina Orlando, the idea that that's who I am is nothing more than the belief in separation. We have to get really clear that we are all God. We are all God, source, spirit, whatever you want to call it. Using this body vessel called Lina to bring love and light to the planet. And once we know the truth of who we are and we can see the eagle 
the thoughts that block us from the awareness of the truth, we can more easily say no to those beliefs. We can more easily recognize, well, when I think that thought of judgment, it feels yucky. I feel contracted. I lose my serenity. I am not happy. And once we put two and two together, that the ego is always the thoughts that either make us feel inflated or deflated. So because it operates in duality, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up and goes down. Or you can say like a pendulum and swings into pain and goes then into pleasure. And we have been so accustomed to accepting pleasure and pain as our reality that we have become totally and completely caught in the illusion, chasing the things that give us pleasure and doing everything we can to avoid what brings us pain. Well, we are on planet earth, ascending out of a 3D consciousness that is based on duality. We cannot ascend until we see the duality. We have to see how we we separate ourselves. We have to see how we have allowed ourselves to experience the, the pull into pleasure and the, the, the push away from pain. And as long as we can't be with what is, we are not free. Let me say that again. As long as we cannot be with what is neutral, no judgment, just observing what is, we cannot be free. A free being is one who knows I'm just playing a role here. I'm just an actor on this stage. I'm just wearing a Halloween costume. I am just here having a good time. And I am going to encounter this thing that some people call pleasurable. I'm going to encounter that thing that some people call uh, painful. And I'm going to be with it and I'm going to observe it. And I'm going to feel into my guidance system. Does this vibrate? at the highest possible frequency. If it does, I want to be in service to bringing more of that to the planet. If it vibrates lower frequency, I wanna be in service to ending that on the planet. But it comes from a place of recognition that I am the creator of my reality. So if I want more happiness, I need to operate in more happiness. I have to think, happy thinking, happy thoughts of happiness. And it's not to, to use it as so much of the typical positive thinking movement. Oh, I just want only happy thoughts, happy thoughts, cancel the negative thoughts. No, this is to use happy thoughts as a base that I am building my experience upon. And to be happy is to understand that I am the creative source expressing itself to have an experience with all that is. So we've got to first become happy with the awareness of the truth of who we really are. And once we recognize clearly, we've done, we gather the information, we've done the integration, and now we are in transformation mode. We are transcending everything that was of this world, judgments and fears and separation and reactions and activations of all those things that create the world that we see. A world of competition, of greed, of hierarchy, of suffering. So we've got to really go back to the root. So it's not just enough for Maria and for Sumli to discover that they're Americans. That is a great place to go to to let go of so many of those beliefs that are not, um, are not true. We've got to go to the place where we recognize, wait a second, I was born in America to American parents, but where did I come from before I became an American? And that's what so much of humanity is doing. It is discovering that it is not just from this country or that country, it is not just Catholic or Jewish. It is not just um, black or white. It's like, where am I really from? And we are expanding our awareness of our non-physical self. So as I continue on this path to do what I'm told to do and, and just absolutely trust, I, I totally trust. I mean, I wouldn't be where I am and at the level of peace and, and ease that I live my life from if it wasn't because I totally trust. Not only do I trust God, and when I point up there, it's like it's, it's out there. I trust that it is what I am. 
Now, do I operate inside of that 100% of the time? No, I don't. But I know when I am not in, in very clear awareness that that is what I am. So my work is simply to do the things that I know are true for me and for everybody else. And that's to operate in a joyful way in service to humanity. That's it. Pretty simple. That's it. All else gets taken care of. And the days of, of planning and, and creating a life and, and having these goals of these things that you need to do so you can check, 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 and then you arrive and you're somebody, those days are gone. For those, and I'm going to be very clear, those who are moving out of the 3D world and, and putting themselves in, in the trajectory of the 5D earth that we are co-creating, go through the 4D bridge. And the 4D is nothing more than an awareness of these two thought systems, the ego mind and the God mind. How do they um, operate differently? What are the words? What is the, the beliefs that each has? Because remember, it's our thoughts that create our reality. So all of our work is with our thoughts. Now, there's body work because our body holds the density of our, of our negative thinking, of our ego thinking. So we got to release that all of that density has to be released, but we don't have to go looking for the density to release. We just allow the process to guide us. And of course, the irritation is the invitation. The judgment is the opportunity to see where we block joy. So it becomes so much easier, but the process from conception to enlightenment is the same for everybody. We cannot skip those stages. Some people come more advanced in one stage than the other, depending on where they left in the past incarnation. When they transition, where were they on that scale, on that map of consciousness, on that scale of emotions, as Abraham calls it? When we know pretty much where we, we came back in, we then know the work that we need to do, but everybody has to go through that circle. This is why Jesus in A Course in Miracles lays out the path that we must go through and it's all about helping us understand that we blocked our awareness of the presence of God uh, within us. So we must cultivate the, the process. We must cultivate the connection with that voice through the process of creating trust in that voice. But that trust in that voice comes after we learn to trust our own voice. Because we all learn how to not trust our voice. We all learn mother, father, teacher, preacher, they were right and we were wrong. So we learn to use our voice with the things of the world. And then we learn to access God's voice within by opening ourselves up to the more that we are. And to acknowledge the more that we are, we have to be absolutely prepared to call ourselves out in total honesty, when we are not operating from the truth. This is the only thing that accelerates our ability to transcend the ego. The soul cannot be fully awake until we become honest about, am I letting my soul speak or am I letting my ego speak? And this process is what the I'm going to call more advanced beings, the ones that are, are on that 40 bridge towards coming together and co-create heaven on earth. That's, that's the lesson is in honesty. And to be honest is to call ourselves out when we're wrong. It doesn't mean that we have to take out an ad in the New York Times or put it on a billboard. It just means that with ourselves, we don't bullshit ourselves with BS, belief systems that are not true. We call ourselves out. I just judged that person. I just went into reaction. I made money so important. When I heard about the stock market, it made me shake. Oh, well, if I'm believing the stock market has power over me, then I don't trust God. That level of honesty is necessary because we cannot go to lesson 101 that says, God wills for me perfect happiness. How can I be perfectly happy if I get wigged out by the stock market? If the stock market or the, the food supply or the medical system upsets me, let me, say, let me say it honestly. If I choose to be upset 
by what happens to the stock market, if I choose to be upset by the medical system or or the the whatever's happening in in Washington DC, if I choose to get upset, I am choosing to block my serenity. I can't feel my peace. And I certainly cannot experience the happiness that God wills for me to have because I am choosing to believe that thing out there that the ego made has the power to make me feel better. And that's one of the tricks of the ego. That's why we have to transcend the ego. We have to end the trans. There is nothing outside of us that can make us feel better. You know, I'm, I'm in the process of looking at a place in Florida. I just found a, found out about this, this, just for me, just a fun little place to have because I know that the days for me to move to Florida are coming. I, I've been feeling the pull. It's where I have family. Not only that, it's where I feel like it's the next place for me to open up a center. I, I'm just feeling that. So it's, it's a couple of, of years away for that transition to fully happen, but it is in process. I can feel it. I'm not resisting it. As much as I want to be in Colorado with my daughter and my grandbaby, that's not going to be home to me. I am being called to Florida. And so if it happens, it happens. If I get that place, it get that place. If, it, if I don't, I don't. It's going to be a, a fun and easy process because it is going to be fully guided. And if it's not this one, it'll be another one. And, and it'll happen when it happens. My mind says within five years, that's where I'll be. But I'm also clear that time does not exist. I'm not bound by time. So what could be five years could turn into 10 years, could turn into two months. I don't know. I'm just following the guidance that I am feeling within because my ego doesn't have me in a trance that oh, I got to make this happen. And oh my God, if, if I don't get the loan, if I don't get the this, oh, things are, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. This is just what I am playing with in this lifetime because let's read lesson 101. God's will for me is perfect happiness. It doesn't say um, occasional happiness or you know partial happiness or you know mild happiness. It's perfect. That means consistent. It is absolutely full of joy. There can't be any other type of happiness. So our work is to find out how do I access the truth that God has for me? This is where honesty comes in. If I'm not living in perfect happiness is because I am blocking it. It's not the government blocking it. It's not the social security going bankrupt that blocks my happiness. I block it with the thoughts that I have about those things. Paragraph one. Today, we will continue with the theme of happiness because when we were reading in our last lesson, my part is essential to God's plan for salvation. And we discovered, oh, so I'm supposed to be joyful. I need to be a happy person because happy people don't hurt others. Happy people don't hurt themselves. So we're continuing on that theme that before to be, to understand our part in God's plan for salvation is to understand that it is our joy. It's our joy that helps us totally and completely transcend the ego. But this is not pleasure, according to the ego. This is pure joy, innocent like a child's. This is why we have to become like little children to enter the kingdom of heaven. Because the creator, what we are all made of is the most playful child, like essence, intelligent, infinite, innocent. That is what we have to activate inside of us because we were made in the image of God, meaning when God imagined us, it could only imagine us to be like itself. So we, deep down inside, at the core of our being, are nothing but a fun, loving, playful, intelligent, incredibly creative, innocent being. That's it. So we are going to continue with this theme of happiness and sentence two says, this is the key idea in understanding what salvation means. We cannot save ourselves and salvation is nothing more than to spare ourselves the suffering that is part of the 3D world. That's what the ego is all about. 
block our awareness from the truth of our happiness being our purpose so that we can experience the suffering that has us be so stuck in low frequencies, feeding the greed of others, feeding the need of others to, to because of their, their selfishness and feeding our own greed, our own, our own, um, it's what the ego would say, service to self, that we need to spare ourselves this, this level of suffering by saving ourselves from this insanity. And this is why it is a key idea to understand that God wants us to experience perfect happiness. Perfect happiness is experienced when you know the truth of who you are. There's no fear in perfect happiness. There's no worry about the future in perfect happiness. There's nothing more than the living in the now, right now, exactly as we are experiencing that truth as the absolute only truth which makes us honest about who we are so we can get on with the work of aligning with God so that we can shift our trust from the ego's world externally to God's world internally and return ourselves to being the creators, co-creators of the new earth we want to experience. See, we were attached to the outside and made us suffer. And we learn to detach from the outside, come inside. And when we come inside and we are free of attachments, don't need anything out there, come back inside. In that freedom, we then co-create the new earth. So we get totally, completely sidetracked out there, come in here, from here, we co-create. But when we co-create, it's not because in the 3D world, the ego had us get from the outside. We are going to be giving from the inside. We are going to be giving our, in, our intelligence, our joy, our creativity. We are going to be giving it to co-create it with others. This is why if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If I'm supposed to be in that place that I think that feels exciting now that I'm supposed to be at, it's because I'm going to be meeting somebody maybe right there in that place. Maybe they walk by there. Maybe it's at the grocery store there. And we're going to co-create that center that I keep feeling may happen in Florida. I don't know. And I don't care because I don't need to know what's coming. I just need to do what I'm told today to do in preparation for that next now moment. But that next now moment is irrelevant to me being today in trust of God. And that's where my honesty comes in. If I'm thinking about the future or worried, well, what if I don't get it? That's not trusting. Well, what if somebody says, no, that's not trusting. What if somebody else buys it? That's not trusting. And I have to be honest with myself about that. So it continues to say here, you still believe it asks for suffering as penance for your sins. We do believe because we have been, this has been ramrodded into us through religion. God, you know, Jesus died for our sins. God sent his one and only son to die for my sins. How horrible is that? So we have, we have been given this beautiful story of liberation and it's been turned into nothing but a, a way to make us feel like we are just these horrible people that because of us, Jesus was put to death and nothing could be further from the truth. You know, Jesus died to prove that he's not a body. Jesus died to prove to us for those with ears to hear and eyes to see, I'm not a body, I am free for I am still as God created me. One of the biggest lessons in A Course in Miracles, because to understand where you come from, you cannot just stop at thinking like the examples that I gave, Maria and Sun Li, that they're just from Peru or China, they've got to come back to the US and then from the US, they got to go further back. So I'm not a body, I am free means I am going further back. I'm moving beyond my incarnation, my entry portal into the world and going back to where did I enter the world from? I got to go through that portal to get to where the truth is, which is why so many people have near-death experiences. In this lifetime, they go through that portal and, and remember truth and then come back so they can share what that is. 
you know, that's the only reason all those people have those NDEs is so they can tell more people about what's on the other side. All those books that are written, all those stories that are told is, is only to activate the truth inside of us. Oh, this is not it. And what we're told by religion is going to happen to it. That's not it right here. You still believe that, that this process um, that salvation entails suffering. Oh, you want to be saved. You have to suffer like Jesus. That's not true. This whole idea that you have sinned, that we've been told that we're dirty, that we've had bad thoughts, that we've had evil thoughts. Yeah, those thoughts enter our mind because they can. We, we can think anything we want. That doesn't make you sinful. That doesn't make you bad. It just means that you entertain thoughts of different frequencies and let yourself believe that some of those various frequencies are your truth and you act that out. But it doesn't mean that you are a bad person. It just means you are one who is exploring in this world, playing roles. You are the actor playing the low frequency thoughts, the high frequency thoughts. You are just playing with the different frequencies. Why? Because you're a playful, innocent child. And that's one of the biggest truths that we have to come back to is that we are a playful, innocent child, giving God the opportunity to experience all that is possible, really for one reason and one reason only, to be done with the lower frequencies, to be done with the 3D incarnation once you have an awareness that you can move to 4 and 5D, that there is something that is more joyful and more in alignment with the truth of who you are. Because to be 3D, you have to believe you're not what you are. That's very uncomfortable. Deliberately, so that you don't stay there, so that you will discover the truth of who you really are and then share that with the world. Be an example of that truth. So then he goes on to say, this is not so. You are not sinful. Yet you must think it's so while you believe that sin is real and that God's son can sin. If we don't understand that sinning, doing wrong things is part of the game, is part of the roles that we play. It's a role that we play, but it is not who we are. Maria is in Peru. She's learned to eat Peruvian food, but that's not who she ultimately is in the game. She's from the U.S. That's where she was born. That's her human heritage. But in truth, truth, she is not even from the U.S. She is eternal like the rest of us. So we have to understand that we're all playing roles that have been labeled by other egos as good or bad, right or wrong, because in the game of duality, we have to have polarity. Polarity shows us when we begin to wake up where we are off. If we're over here too much, we have to balance it over here. If we're over here too much, we've got to balance it over here. And when we balance it too, we then come into the middle way. And that's why we use the information of where we were sinning, where we were not doing the things that are more in alignment with our soul. We see the polarity to bring us into compassion and forgive ourselves for we didn't know what we were doing. Because why did we not know what we were doing? We forgot what we are. We start the game by forgetting what we are, by putting up all those, those barriers, those blocks, those beliefs that makes us forget who we are. So if we're going to be accused of anything that is actually accurate is that we have been forgetful. That's it. We've been forgetful. And once you begin to remember, that's all we're doing is we're remembering. And once you remember, you're not going to do the things that you did when you forgot, because now you know what you're supposed to do. It's all very simple. Paragraph two, if sin is real, then punishment is just and cannot be escaped. Salvation thus cannot be purchased, but through suffering, which we have been taught through the church. If sin is real, then happiness must be illusion, for they cannot both be true. You can't be happy if you're going to be punished for your sins and go to hell forever. The sinful warrant only death and pain. And it is this that they ask for. I want to read this line again. 
the sinful warrant only death and pain, and it is this they ask for. When we operate with low frequency, I'm not good enough, I'm a liar, I'm a cheater, I'm, I'm not beautiful, I'm not special, nobody wants me, I'm not lovable. When we carry that thought inside of us, and all of us do until we begin to transcend those that way of thinking, we are literally asking for the punishment that matches that frequency. We are literally asking for the partner that is not going to uh, love us till death do us part. We are literally asking for the boss who's going to fire us because I'm not worthy. So we are literally punishing ourselves by thinking thoughts that bring to us the frequency that matches the ability to experience the role that lets us know I'm not worthy. Because the more you experience I'm not worthy, the more you want to discover I am worthy. So all of these things work together. We have to forget. Then we have to enter into duality. Then we have to move into polarity. Then we have to have the negative thoughts because the ego, that's what the ego is all about, is blocking truth. So we got to think the lies. Very creative. Talk about writing a beautiful script. So you start thinking the lies that give you the suffering that then has you want to have the pleasure. And then you swing over and you get the pleasure. And after you go back and forth and you see that, oh, pleasure and pain, you know, it, it's, it's a game. The, the things that bring me pleasure don't last. Then you want to come into the middle way where you want what is sustainable, what is lasting. And to find what is lasting, you got to come inside because you're not going to find anything lasting out there, period. It's not possible. That which is lasting is that which is within, and that's, that's where eternity resides, is in our, our connection to the truth of who we are, the kingdom of heaven being within. I and the Father, Mother, God are one. That's what's eternal. And from there, what incarnation, what do I want this incarnation to look like? What, what role do I want to play in my next incarnation? And for me, it is to assist before the role that I play was, you know, mom, wife, realtor, busy chasing money, making sure I look good, making sure everybody liked me and blah, 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 blah. It was fun, but it was very exhausting because it was polarity. It was good and bad. I won, I lost, I won, I lost, I won, I lost. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was on a hamster wheel, Groundhog Day all the time. That role got boring once I saw it was a role. And what role do I want to play now? Now I want to play the role of, of being in service to those who are co-creating a new earth and specifically those who are transcending their ego so that they can free their soul. That's it. Very simple. That's my, my only thing that really absolutely jazzes me because that's, that's my happiness is felt in fulfilling my role. And it goes on to say here, as we saw, if you are operating from your ego, you are going to experience suffering. So for they, these are the people who think that they're sinful, for they know it waits for them, the punishment, and it will seek them out and find them somewhere, sometime in some form that event that evens the account they owe God. Deep down inside, we know if we are a sinner, this is our ego, we're going to get punished. We've been taught that. We saw that in school. If we didn't do our part, we we're going to get punished. If we didn't, didn't do our job, we were going to get fired. There's always rewards and punishments in the world of the ego. So while we are fearing God, because the church taught us to fear God, we are expecting God to punish us. And you know where that comes from? The ego. The ego mind, the belief that God punishes us is made up, made up by humans. Why would God punish any, anything that it creates to experience life through? If God created Lina to experience life as Lina, why would God punish itself? I mean, think about it. Why would I punish myself? It, it's, it's insane, isn't it? That's why we're waking up to the insanity of the ego and we've got to become sane again. Then he goes on to say the, the second to last sentence in paragraph two, they would escape him in their fear. And yet he will pursue 
and they cannot escape. We have been told that we are sinners. God's going to punish us and God will find us no matter where we are. It's going to find us and punish us. But when we transcend that nonsense and we come into our senses, because to transcend the nonsense, you must come into your senses, common sense that dictates why if I am God, am I going to chase me to punish me when all I want to do is be happy and free? Totally nonsensical. So the mind has to be corrected, put us back on track so that we learn the thoughts of the God inside, discover, well, it wants perfect happiness for me. But here's the trick. You know perfect happiness when it is for the greater good of all. You never do anything selfishly. The ego that wants to be happy is really looking for pleasure to counterbalance pain, suffering. It's a reward for the punishment that it experiences in other parts of its life. When we are in alignment with God, this is why you have to be honest. Am I really trusting? Am I trusting that everything's going to work out for the greater good of all? If I'm supposed to be there, I'm going to go there. But there's no selfish, greedy, oh my God, it's the place I have to go to. There is only, I'm going to be where it's in the best interest for all that is. Why? Because I'm one with all that is. Why wouldn't I want it to be perfect for all that is since I'm one with it? This is where logic kicks in. If you know you are God and you know you're one with all that is, you only want what's good for all that is. You don't want to be better or lesser. You don't want to be right or wrong or make anything else wrong. You want the neutrality that allows you to experience equality. And from that equal place, we enjoy the diversity, all the diversity that is on this planet of infinite potential. The next paragraph says, paragraph three, if sin is real, salvation must be pain. So if the ego believes that I'm going to be punished for my sins, then, well, I'm going to have to suffer. And when we allow ourselves to believe that suffering is okay, we're blocking perfect happiness because in perfect happiness, there is no suffering. Pain is the cost of sin and suffering can never be escaped if sin is real. Salvation must be feared for it will kill, but slowly taking everything away before it grants the welcome boom of death to victims who are little more than bones before salvation is appeased. Its wrath is boundless, merciless, but wholly just. We have been so confused by being told that, well, the only way to save yourself from your sins is to when you die, you go and you meet God and you will be in judgment day and then you will be judged good or bad. And if you didn't do the things you were supposed to do that we, the church, have been telling you to do, like pay your, your 10% and send us a lot of money and do all these things and don't tell anybody what the priest did to you and don't tell anybody what the, you know, how we cheated or how we did whatever. If you lie for us and you behave the way we tell us we tell you to be, then, then you will go to heaven. But if you don't put that fear in us, like little children that we are it, deep down inside, holy, holy, holy children. Ah, we don't want to disappoint mom and dad, the church, the government, the teacher. So when we believe this stuff, we let our minds be so filled with misinformation that we literally create that experience for ourselves because we are writing the script of our performance. I'm a bad person. I'm going to go to hell. I'm going to be punished. But God, God can save me. And maybe, you know, if God saves me, then things will be better. Well, that, that couldn't be further from the truth. God wants you to know who you are, know that you are absolutely whole, perfect, and complete, just playing a role, have fun with it, lighten up, and then you will experience true salvation because salvation comes from you saving yourself from the nonsense you've been believing that keeps you like an immature child looking at everybody else as your mom and dad that has the power to dictate what you can and cannot do. And humanity is waking up from this insanity. 
Course in Miracles tells us that we have one problem and one solution. The one problem that we have is the authority problem. See, since the more moment we were born, we were told to look to mother, father, teacher, preacher, doctor, government, media out there as the authority that knows what's best for us. And we have sent, been sent out into the world to become adults with information in our mind that keeps us immature because we think like a four, five, six-year-old that went to church and was scared to death about what God was going to do to us when we died or scared to death because we saw mommy uh, being beaten by daddy, or we saw, you know, mommy beat our, our brother, or we saw uncle do something absolutely horrible to one of our siblings or to us. So our mind is arrested in an immature child's perception that is absolutely incorrect. However, it is what it is, because that is the portal that we came through to begin the process of sorting out the, the truth from the illusion, the, the made up roles from the world versus the roles that we want to play consciously. So we have to become conscious of the unconscious programming and get honest. If you're judging, you're not trusting. If you are in comparison, they have more than I do, or I'm better than them because I have more than they do. We are not we're not operating from the perfect happiness that God wills for us. That's why we suffer, especially depending on the level of the of awareness that we have. If we are pretty self-aware, we know when we've been judging, even if it's after the fact or sometimes in the middle of it, but we can't, it's like, I can't reel in the judgment because the words are coming out of my mouth, but we know that we're lying to ourselves. And that's one of the beautiful things about honesty, that there's nothing like the truth meter, because once you know you're, you're not in integrity, then you know where the work is and it becomes really quick, really easy. As the course has taught us, you forgive yourself for forgetting the truth of who you are in that moment. You got caught up in a moment of enjoying the righteousness of the judgment you enjoyed the, because it was familiar, it was like getting a shot of, of insulin um, or getting a shot of, of, of uh, drugs for, that's what I meant to say, a, a shot of, of cocaine for an addict. You get that quick high of judgment. Oh, how can they, they be doing that? That moment of, oh, how can they be doing that gives us a high. Oh, I get to be right. And then you realize, oh, I, I just put poison in my body. There is a beautiful opportunity for everybody who wants to awaken. The teachers are everywhere. The, the, it, it's, you know, it's just a matter of, are the students ready? Are the students ready? Are you ready to transcend your ego and free your soul? Then follow the very simple steps. Of course, the miracles lays them out. We have, we have a, a universe that is set up ready to help anybody who wants to move out of this insanity but you cannot do it until you understand what your role is and your role is to be perfectly happy. So today we read more about how the mind's been trained with sinful beliefs and, and the mind's been trained to accept that salvation only comes if you suffer like Jesus did. All that made up so that you would know how easy this is. So we have to be the example of the easy way because we are the teachers for those who are around us, they're watching us. And we don't have to hang a shingle out that says, I'm a teacher, but we teach through our behaviors. We teach through our words, through our actions, because that's how else do they know what we believe except for us to be showing what it is that we're committed to learning. And if we're committed to learning truth and forgiveness and happiness, well, then we're teaching through our choices. Let's see. Yeah, so when we come back next week, we will go ahead and continue. So we got through paragraph three and we will just pick up from there and keep going because in, in what the Course in Miracles is attempting to help us see is the path to freedom, freedom from suffering.
So we'll unpack the happiness part next week more so. So thank you so much for being here. And if anybody wants to unmute yourselves and share any thoughts or, or any, um, anything that came to you, any ahas, by all means, I'd love to hear from you. And um, if not, well, we just meet next week. Hi. Hello, Miss Kat. Um, as usual, I always, I'm always glad I'm on the call. Um, what really struck me was a lot of the stuff about you have to come to neutral <clears throat> because late, that's a, sometimes it's, it's a challenge mm -hmm. to do that for sure. Um, uh, and you said use happy thoughts as a base. Was that the base when you said that? You mean that as we're that's our that's that's what God wants for us. So that's our that's the bottom line. Foundational. It's going to be foundational in the five D Earth. Also. Um, so it's, it's, it's so amazing to think that I am God. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's a wow kind of thing, you know? And, uh, and I, I do remind myself of that frequently. And yet sometimes I forget, um, but I love also, and I know it, and I and I say this to people, and I it's a way to say it to myself is be in this present moment, be in this present moment. So um, to release this density, we we have to. Well, we don't. We we want to return to our natural, our God given state, which is happiness and joy. Yet. I, you know, just, I'm just bum. If I allow myself, if I put the TV on, you know, I'm just like, oh my gosh. It's, it, um, it's a challenge for me to be neutral. So that's a good place for me to, to say, I want to know what's going on, yet I don't want to be, I don't want to be sucked into it in terms of getting uh, upset, worried, anxious pressed any of that um so i i really have to pull myself i have to do the shift and lift a lot you know i still do so That's simple yeah yeah it is and i find myself judging a lot of things that so i'm like er, stop yeah, don't do that so anyway I, I i really enjoyed today it was a wonderful reminder of what to value yeah you know what to value um, yes value so happiness value peace value truth value neutrality and you are building the foundation that you can you can build your house on and it's not going to go anywhere because we are building a, a house a, a new earth on a foundation of truth and, and when we all operate from the same truth there cannot be anything but pure joy and fun and collaboration and co-creation. So thank you for doing the work of transcending your ego to the best of your ability. I, I have to do it to the best of my ability. And sometimes I, you know, some days it was easier than others until it just became more consistent. But I've watched you all these years moving more and more to that consistency. So thank you because we need more and more of us to co-create the new earth with. So thank you, sister. Love being on for the journey. Yes, yes, ditto, fun travelers. Yes, Christo, you gonna share? Yes, um, well, I love, the, I love the reminder of happiness. I mean, um, and, uh, and the recognition that happiness is different for, for each person. Um, that's what makes it so wonderful because we don't all land on 
on the same functions to make us happy, you know, or the same purposes. Or so um, I think that's really exactly what makes me happy. That's what it is. And one just needs to be um, almost accurate with that, with one, or truthful with oneself about that. And um, and the neutrality aspect is, um, I find it sometimes very difficult to get to the neutral point, but once I'm there, everything's easy. <laughs> and, and then it becomes a razor's edge to stay on it, um, like a tight room, you know, balancing. And, and some whoops, there comes something to push me off, you know, and, and then there's a, and that's where the practice comes for me to stay neutral when the winds and the storm is, is about to. Yeah. All about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, so to speak, you know. And then um, it's, um, it's that's I guess comes with experience. And I'm, I have learned a lot from practicing staying in the neutral point, but still need to practice more. And um, yeah, there was something else that I've not forgotten about that. But, um, thanks, thanks for those wonderful shares. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being part of this. And um, I look forward to next week and the continuation because it's so fun when this stuff just flows through me. And it's like, yes, I love the, the juiciness of the, the simplicity of these messages. And um, it's fun. Thank you all so much for being part of this today. So appreciate it. And we'll see you next week. And I'm going to be texting. Um, and I'll put it inside of the group, uh, a, a day and time for us to get together for just a plain Q&A session. And um, I'll put it out there and I'll look at my calendar and join us if you can. If you can't, it's okay. I'll, I'll do it until we can connect. All right. I love you all so much. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Absolutely. Bye. Bye. -bye.